This is the venerable HP 12C, released by Hewlett Packard in 1981 and discontinued in never. The HP 12C is one of, if not the most, popular calculators of all time. Part of that is due to one specific feature, especially enjoyed by programmers and engineers. It is a financial calculator, with many of its functions being based around that, such as interest rate and payment calculations, but it also uses reverse Polish notation. I have two examples here that are mostly the same, but I'm going to be using the one that someone saw fit to gouge presumably their initials out of. I'll come back to the really minor differences between these two later on in the video. Everyone familiar with it enjoys handing an RPN calculator to people unfamiliar with the concept and asking them to perform a simple calculation, such as addition. It's a very different way of expressing equations from the traditional algebraic notation that most people are accustomed to. Before I tell you how it works, note the lack of an equals key, or despite its complex features, even parentheses. Now RPN works much more like how the computer inside the calculator works. To calculate an RPN, first you must enter in one number, commit it to memory, enter in the other, then tell the processor what operation you want to perform. To give you a demonstration of how this is like the computer itself, let's take a look at running some assembly that does the same addition operation for an Intel 8086. The code that does it is these three lines. We're using two registers in the computer to temporarily store data, then using an addition command to add them together. When you run it, you load the A register with the first number, the B register with the second, then you run the addition on the two registers. The result is stored in the first register, which in this case is register A. I have more program here to finish it out, and this just prints the result to the screen. Now that you have more information on how this works at the CPU level, let's go back to the calculator and see what this means. So you have two registers on the HP 12C. As you type in the first register, you are typing the data directly into the X register. The X register is always displayed on the screen. When you hit enter, you are copying the data from the X register to the second register, which is Y. As you type in the next number, you are overwriting the data in the X register as it is displayed on the screen. If you want to swap the contents of the X register in the Y register so you can see what is in the Y register, all you have to do is press this button, and then you can see what is in both registers. Once you're ready to do your calculation, all you have to do is press the button that corresponds with the operation you want to do. The end result is put into the X register so it is displayed on the screen. So reverse Polish notation is much more bare metal when it comes to working with calculator hardware than algebraic notation is. Let's use another assembly example to compare what is required to accept user input algebraically. On the left is some assembly that more closely mimics the HP 12C than I showed before, and on the right is what it would take to have the assembly input in algebraic order. So to express an RPN, we're going to put in the first operand into the A register, copy it to the B register, then put the final operand back into the A register, then run our addition command. Now for algebraic notation, we have a couple more steps we have to do and one more variable we have to store. So we're going to start out by storing the first operand in the A register, then we have to store the operator, so we're going to put that in the B register. Then finally, we're going to store the second operand in a new register, C. Now, we have to decide what operation we're going to perform. With RPN, you can directly tie the key to executing an operation, but with algebraic notation, you have to store what operation you're going to perform. So in this case, 5 is used to express the addition operator, and we have to compare what is in the B register with the known number 5. After that has been proven to be the same, we can jump to the label that is the addition operation and then carry it out. Now to use this calculator, you don't need to fully understand the technical details or understand the implications of directly manipulating the stack, but you should at least know that you are directly entering in values for the X and Y registers. For example, if you want to do an exponent, you need to know which number is in each register so it runs correctly. 
Now that you know more about how RPN calculators work in general, let's take a look at some of the more specific features that the HP-12C has. Now on top of the X and Y registers, the HP-12C also has 20 storage registers that can store and recall a number. All you have to do is type in the number you want to store, hit store, and then choose a register. You can then recall the number whenever you want. If you power off the calculator, you can even get your numbers back after a full power cycle. Building on the functionality of the data registers, here's a feature where understanding a little bit about how the calculator works internally can help. You can use a data register as one of the operation registers. So let's try this out. I'm going to start by storing 10 into register one. Now we're going to add five to that register, but to make it clear exactly what is going on, first I'm going to input seven and copy it to the Y register. So now both X and Y are seven. I only mention that so that you can see that throughout this entire process, the Y register will remain unchanged. Now I will input X with five, and instead of just beginning the operation, I'll hit the store button, then addition, then the register I want to use, and the result is unchanged. And if we switch to Y, we can see Y is still seven. But if we load the storage register, we can see that five has now been added to it. Now the storage registers on the HP 12C are obviously awesome. The ability to enter in a number, store it, turn off the calculator and recall it later is immensely useful. But the ability to turn it off and on and get the number means that this calculator has something very interesting, non-volatile storage. Now any device that's able to do calculations and non-volatile storage is pretty useful, but the most useful thing you could do with it is to write programs. The HP 12C is a programmable calculator. Now you have 99 lines of storage, and if you start to fill that up, you will eat into your data storage, but that's still a lot of functionality to have for programmability. Now the way that it stores data is unusual. You might think that it will store a word that represents a command in basic, but no, it stores numbers. Then you might think it stores numbers that represent each function, but no, that's still not how it works. It stores numbers that represent the rows and columns on the calculator, starting from this one. So if I press this one, you might think it's going to be zero, zero, but again, no, that's one, one. It's an RPN calculator, which means that it's much more bare metal, but they decided to start all of the rows and columns at one, which can be extra confusing if you're using this side of the calculator because it's 10, so it's zero. <laughs> Obviously not a programmer's calculator there. Now, since the program memory just stores the key locations, all you have to do to program the calculator is just press a sequence of keys. Although there is one little thing you should know when you're ending the program. So let's do a, a really basic program that just adds the X and Y registers. Now we're going to assume that you've preloaded the X and Y registers with the numbers you want to add together. So all you're going to do to start this is just press the plus key. That's it. It will now run the addition operation. To end the program correctly, you do need to do a couple more steps though. If you don't add any additional end statements here, the program might continue running what was left in memory, and that could lead to unexpected consequences in your data result. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this and then push the go to button. Now we're going to tell it to go back to the start of the program at line zero. And from there, the program is complete. We now have a full end sequence. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to enter in four, copy that to Y, enter in six, and now we're going to run our program and get 10. Very easy. But your programs aren't limited to being simple on this calculator. This calculator has two conditional statements which allows you to do branching logic coupled with the go to statement. So let's take a look at solving a more complicated problem. Futurama was a show written by nerds, and not just nerds that played Magic the Gathering, no, these people had 
PhDs on the writing staff. So they hid all sorts of jokes in this show. It's just, it's awesome. But the joke that I'm most interested in here was one of the alien languages. Now, there were two alien languages in the show that were primarily used. One of them was just a direct English character substitution. All of the alien language was actually English, just different glyphs representing the words. The second alien language, though, required conversion to the numerical representations of the letters and then a little bit of math to decrypt them. So, we're going to write an algorithm that decrypts the alien language in Futurama on the HP-12C. Alright, before we start writing the calculator program, let's go ahead and do this by hand once so you can see how this actually works. So, I've gone ahead and encoded the word test in the second alien language. Now, each one of these characters is going to have a numeric value associated with it. So, let's start out by just writing those down. So, this one is 19. This one is 23. This one is 15. And this one is 8. Now, to decode these, you need to subtract the previous number's value and then if it's less than zero, add 26. But the first character is always directly translated. So if we look at the reference chart, we can see that this is T. Now, 23 minus 19 is just going to be four. So we can direct directly translate that to E. Now, 15 minus 23 is going to wrap around and since we have a handy dandy calculator right here, let's go ahead and do it on here. 15, 23, minus is negative 8. So we know we need to add 26. Whoops, that was 23. <laughs> 8, change sign, 26, plus, oh man, okay, 8, change sign, enter, 26, plus, there we go, 18. So this is... 18, which is T. <laughs> and finally, we have 8 and 15. So that would also be negative. Let's go ahead and get this in here. 8, enter, 15 minus 26 plus 19. Wait, I screwed something up. Yeah, 18, that was supposed to be S. That's my bad. <laughs> S, 19 is T. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I only had one shot at this for the paper, so, oh well, you get the idea. So, now let's go ahead and start entering a program equivalent to this in the calculator. Okay, since the HP-12C's programming interface is not the easiest thing to use, being a single line editor that requires exiting, running a go-to command, and then re-entering the editor to change to a different line, we're going to go ahead and just write the program on a piece of paper and then copy it into the calculator when we're done. So the first thing we need to do is make an assumption that the X and Y registers have been preloaded with the numbers for the characters we need. Since you have to subtract the previous symbol's numeric value from the current symbol, well, that means we're going to have the new character in the Y register and the old character in the X register. So you'll type these in new number and then enter, then old number. Once we do that, though, we can begin the program. So, line one is going to be the initial subtraction, all right? Easy enough. Line two is going to be a store command because we're going to need to recall the calculation later. So we're going to store to register one. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is set up for the comparison operation. This command tests whether x is less than or equal to y. So at this point in the program, x contains the result of our subtraction. What we need to do is put that value into y and replace x with zero. So all we have to do to do that is type in zero. Now these registers are loaded in the correct way for us to run the comparison. So all we have to do is just run that comparison. So that will be the very next thing. So what this comparison does is decide whether or not to run the next line of the program. So that will decide whether or not we run line five 
or we skip it and go to line six. So a true condition here means that we run line five and a false condition means that we run line six. What this means, and that's next, what that means is if we put a go to command in line five, we have branching execution and we can skip part of the code. So what we're going to do is put a go to in here and we'll use this as our exit from this next part of the code. Now, if this is false, that means that the number was negative after the subtraction and we need to add 26 to it. So all we have to do is type in two, six, and then we're good. So now we have two possible conditions here. We either have zero in X because that was the last thing run or we have 26. So what we're going to do is go to eight now and we're going to recall our value that we stored previously. So we're going to recall one. And this is where the two lines of code meet back up. So we can put eight right here. Now we again will now, after we recall this actually, Y will either contain 26 or zero. So the final step here is going to be number nine, where we just add the two. So if this number was negative, we typed in 26, we recalled this and then we added it, we'll have a positive number, which means that we can decode our character value. If it was not a negative value, it means zero was last thing type, it skipped that, went to recall the number and added zero to our recalled number, and now we can still proceed to continue on with the decryption. And then from here, it's pretty simple. Number 10 on the lines will just be a go-to to go back to the beginning of the program and then it ends. So let's go ahead and type this in. Okay, now that we have the program entered into our HP 12C, we can go ahead and try decrypting test again that we wrote out here. So like last time, the T for the first character will just be directly passed through, but now we can try converting the E, S, and T. So we'll start out by entering in 23 and 19 and then running the program. We get four back out of it, which is correct for the E. All right, now we can type in the next character, 15, the previous character, 23, run the program. We get 18, which is S. And finally, we can type in eight and then 15 and we get 19, which is T. And that was the whole program working. So it's, that's just, that's so awesome. You can write a program with branching logic on just like the super simple little calculator. It's so cool. This thing's awesome. Now this is of course a financial calculator, which means it comes with features specific to that specialty. To someone like me though, those aren't of particular interest. But um, tss. But I do like the percentage calculation feature it has. It will tell you what percentage of the number in the Y register the X register is. So if you put four into Y and two into X, it will tell you that X is 50% of Y. But if financial calculations aren't your cup of tea, there is another solution. Well, maybe. The 12C had a sister calculator, the 15C. And the 15C and the 12C are actually just part of the same series of Voyager calculators by HP. The 12C and the 15C were just the ones to achieve the most success. As a side note, of particular interest to someone like me would be the 16C, a programmer calculator. But I digress. The 15C is more of a standard scientific calculator that has commonplace functions like sine, cosine, and tangent. It is still an RPN calculator like the 12C. It even shares its physical key layout with the 12C. Now, before you go and try and get a 15C instead, I have to burst your bubble. It is considerably more difficult to get. Its production span lasted only from 1981 to 1989, with a brief reissue in 2011 for the 30th anniversary. I mentioned that the 12C was never discontinued, and it has been in continuous production for around 38 years now. But they can't just keep making the same IC from the early 80s forever. 
After changing the chip design several iterations, HP eventually decided to put an ARM processor in there, emulating the original NUT. Now being an ARM chip, that meant people could possibly reprogram the calculator. And HP didn't actually try to lock people out of it, and left a serial programming port right on the board, and even released an SDK for developing for it. Later on, they even replaced the serial interface with a missing USB port to make it even easier. So it should be possible to get one of the newer calculators and reprogram it with whatever features you want, like duplicating a 15C. I would really like to say that you can find custom firmware out there from the active community, but there doesn't really seem to be one. On GitHub, there are only seven repos that come up when you search for HP 12C, and none of them are firmware. Now I wouldn't mind checking this out myself, but the calculators I have are the original production run before they even changed the chip fab process to a lower voltage level and changed to a CR2032 for power. So inside these are the original CPUs for this calculator. Definitely not a reprogrammable ARM. And while these are common enough you can walk into a store and possibly find one, they still aren't all that inexpensive. So I'll stick with my thrift store finds here. Now, despite being a financial calculator, I do really like this thing, though. I could list off all of its features and give you an idea of its capabilities, but that's only part of the story. Using it feels really nice. Well, at least this one. This is the original US production run, I think at least, I haven't opened it to verify, and it's just, it's solid. The other one I have is a Brazilian production run that I assume is a cost optimized lower quality version and it's just not as good this one feels really solid the buttons are satisfying they just got it right now it does use an lcd instead of vfds or leds like some other calculators did at the time which means you'll need a light source nearby to use it but that is for the trade-off of battery life which in my experience has been excellent on this thing well, that pretty much wraps up everything I have to say about the HP 12C. It's an awesome, small RPN calculator with storage and programmability. I mean, yeah, it's a financial calculator, but oh, it's, it's just awesome. Sure, I would love to have a 15C or a modern 12C that I'd program to be a 16C, really. But I'm really happy with this. And if I can get my hands on one, I know I would really like something like a 41C, which is the bigger, batter version of the same calculator chipset. So maybe one of these days I'll get a hold of one of those. But for now, the 12C is really awesome. If you guys want to see other videos I've done on vintage calculators, I'll have a link somewhere. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, I'm on Patreon. I've actually never mentioned it, and apparently I should. So yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time.